Hey everyone, Matt Gunn here with FlyingGiants.com. Welcome to part one of a two-part review of the Great Plains Sequence 1.20 pattern plane. Now, Great Plains describes the sequence as an intermediate level pattern ship that's slightly smaller than some of the others out there and utilizes less expensive power systems. And that makes it a great platform for learning how to fly pattern and for competing in NSRCA sportsman and intermediate classes but you don't have to be a competitor to really enjoy the sequence. It's just a great looking pattern ship and should be a welcome addition to anyone's hangar. Now in this review, we're gonna go over my initial impressions after the build. We'll discuss what to look out for during assembly and what electronics I chose to run in the sequence. In the second video, we'll take the sequence out to the field and do a full flight review. But right now, let's go ahead and talk about the build. Now, Great Plains has been doing this long enough that they have their act together with producing almost ready-to-fly aircraft that build easily with no real surprises, and the sequence is definitely one of those aircraft. But there are a few steps that require special tools to complete. And the first thing you're going to need is a rotary tool with a cutoff wheel and some safety glasses. The wheel axles are just a little too long and need to be cut down to fit inside the wheel pants and you're also going to need to grind a flat spot in the axles for the grub screws to grab onto. Now second, the manual gives you two options for mounting the cowl. You can go the traditional method of installing it with the bolts on the outside or a more streamlined approach by mounting the cowl with the bolts inside against the firewall. Now unless you have a 10 inch 332 hex driver on hand, you're going to need to fab one up and the manual details how to do this and actually supplies everything except for the wrench, which unfortunately you're going to have to sacrifice from your own tool collection. But since this tool will be used for the life of the plane, I think it's a necessary sacrifice. And like I said earlier, the sequence build quality is great. It assembles quickly with no real surprises. The fuselage is lightweight and very rigid, and it includes molded foam inserts under the turtle deck and in the belly. Now the fiberglass control horns are very strong, as is the two-piece carbon fiber landing gear and the wing tubes. Now the most time-consuming part of the build, if you really want to call it that, is really just running the servos and the pull-pull cables from the rudder. My only complaint worth noting is that the graphics pattern on the cowl and the fuselage don't quite match up. And I've seen this on other sequences, so I know it's not just mine. Now it's not really a big deal, but it is worth noting. Now the sequence 1.20 comes ready for either nitro or electric power and includes a fuel tank if you decide to go that route. But I chose the E alternative and went with the Rimfire 1.20 motor, Castle Creations Phoenix Edge 80HV ESC, and a Thunder Power G8 Pro Force 6S 5000 LiPo Pack. Now, since the Castle 80HV ESC doesn't have a BEC capable of converting 22.2 volts down to 4.8 volts, I'm running a Castle Creations Sport BEC to provide power to the receivers and the servos. Great Plains includes pieces to create an arming switch too, but I've decided not to go that route at the moment. And if I decide to, I'll detail it in the review. And finally, I'm using Futaba S3152 standard servos on the ailerons and the rudder, and a pair of S9650 mini servos on the elevators. Now my transmitter is a Tactic TTX850. So now I've got the Great Plains sequence built, it's time to balance her out and dial in the appropriate control throws for the maiden flight. I'll cover balancing and final setup as well as the flight video in our next segment, so stay tuned to FlyingGiants.com for more, and thanks for watching. 